opinión de Liga a todo en esta mañana. Estamos aquí celebrando la vida de que vida fuera de Novia Cortés, una mujer que le sirvió a Dios por muchos años y que ahora está en el cielo. Eh, hay una cuestión bíblica en la Biblia, en el mismo capítulo 14, que es conocida de todos nosotros. Diciendo que el tiempo es corto, ¿verdad? Voy a hacer lo más breve posible. Dice, no se turbe vuestro corazón, creed en Dios, creed también en mí. En la casa de mi padre muchas moradas hay, y si no fuera así, lo hubiera dicho, voy pues a preparar lugar para que donde yo esté vosotros estéis. Que son palabras sexuales de Jesús, eh, que le hizo promesa a la iglesia. Eh, hoy en día, hace más de dos mil años que Jesús dijo esas palabras. Este, nosotros no podemos ni imaginarnos cómo son las mansiones allá en el cielo, porque aún el hombre más millonario de esta tierra eh, mande a hacer una mansión en su, eh, aquí en la tierra para vivirla y disfrutarla, no se puede comparar con lo que hay en el cielo. O sea que no hay palabras, la foto Pablo dijo que allá en el cielo hay cosas que, que un humano nunca ha visto. Y el hermano Aloni se encuentra viendo ahora esas mansiones. Esas mansiones allá en el cielo. Y yo creo, hermano, ¿verdad? Que eh, nosotros vamos a estar también viendo esas mansiones y perseveramos en los caminos del Señor. Y le decimos a la hermana Lorena, no a Dios, sino hasta luego. Hasta luego. Porque lo que está ahí es el cuerpo de ella. ¿Verdad? Lo que, eh, ese, ese templo que está ahí es donde se meñaba el espíritu que él puso ahí, pero ahora se encuentra en otro sitio, en la presencia de Dios, donde donde puede hablar allí, no hay enfermedad, no hay vejez, no hay ningún problema, todo allí es gozo, todo es alegría, y allí está nuestra hermana disfrutando de este momento. Este, eh, ahora nos cuesta a nosotros esperar, también, cuando nos llegue el momento, también, regocijarnos con ella en el cielo, de decir, valió la pena servirle a Dios. Este, siendo que el tiempo avance, yo quisiera decir muchas cosas, ¿verdad? Porque, eh, una historia larga que se puede escribir un libro acerca de la vida de la hermana Lorín, del tiempo que le conozco, una mujer humilde, una mujer que fue trabajadora, una mujer que amaba, una mujer que, que, que servía al prójimo, una consejera, una madre muy buena, ¿verdad? Eh, y una abuela también muy buena, hablaba de los nietos, hablaba de los hijos, hablaba de la familia, y qué bueno es cuando, hermano, nosotros podemos aprender de estas personas. Que Dios le bendiga. Y habló este, tu servidor, el pastor Esteban Alvarado, pastor de la iglesia de Pentecostal, internacional del 288 Marquetri, donde ella era miembro de nuestra organización. Dios le bendiga, hermano Pablo, y con nosotros. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the ask that God that you would bless this time. Um, I want to thank my family, my friends, friends, Pastor. Um, Esteban Alvarado for their encouragement and love for mom during her trial. Especially to thank my sister Edie for her loving work with mom through the sleepless nights, unwavering in her loving care. Edie was there. Thank you, Edie, and thank you, Pete. May 3rd, 2020. My mother went to glory. You know, um, a eulogy represents a beautiful, special time this way to usher my mother into her rest and peace. However, difficult it is to deliver the right words confidently when you are grieving, distracted by pain, one feels in your heart is a difficult thing. As a pastor, I hope that um, I can ease this pain, this, uh, this difficult moment comprehensively in guidance uh, to celebrate my mother's life and to honor not her death, but her life. When I was a child, my mother would tuck us Uh, the covers under our, our, my neck before I went to sleep. And she would do it as well with my brothers and my sisters. 
And as she would look towards us, she would be praying for us. And as a young man, I often would pass by her a room on the side and she would be on her knees before the God that she loved, pleading for her family. And as a Christian woman of God, mom was a woman that prayed for everybody. She was a, a loving prayer warrior. Isaiah 40, 26. Where does my help come from? When mom prayed, she would lift up her eyes unto heaven, to the God that created all things. And that is where her help came from. There were numerous stars in the heavens. And God calls each star by name. And with God's great power and mighty strength, not a star is missing. Mom is one of those stars. And God knows her name. Before God formed mom in the womb, God knew her and he set her apart. Mom, Grandma Lowly, was fearfully and wonderfully made. And God said, I know you by name. And because of your, the life that you lived, you have also found favor in my sight. God had engraved mother's name, Elogia, in the palm of his hand. The day my mother is in paradise. She has met Jesus face to face and has already spoken to him. He has wiped away every tear from her eyes. The master has said to her, welcome home. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the eternal glory where there'll be no more death, nor mourning, nor crying, nor pain, nor distress shall exist no more. For the former things are passed away. These promises are not only for mom, but God extends that to you. My mother is speaking out of the grave to every one of you who would believe in Jesus Christ. As my mother believed so faithfully for many, many years in her life. Mom very often would take the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ to all who would listen. And it was very important for mom, Grandma Lowly, to share her faith in Christ. Because where she is now is where she would want you to be. Mom would often say, Jesus loves you. Come to Jesus today. He's extending that invitation to you. So that where you can be, okay, there is no death, no sickness or worries. Only singing in the heavenly kingdom. And joy in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you, Mom, from all of us. And we love you. Thank you. I just want to close in prayer. Father, we thank you, dear God, for this time that we could be together. I just want to praise you, dear God, for the mom that, you know, has gone before you, Lord, in, in glory and because of her life, dear God, the salvation that you provide for all of us. I thank you for mom. I thank you for the family that God has come after her, from her and mom, grandpa, and grandpa, and grandma. You know, you have all the siblings after that and all the in-laws. 
and they've all been good Christians and good servants, even to the end. So we thank you, Lord God, for being with us all. I ask you, God, to provide is your peace in our hearts now. But we leave, dear God, with joy in our heart that mom is with you in your arms today. Well, wasn't sure, didn't plan on coming up here to say anything, but how can I not? Anybody who knows me knows how close I am. He needs the world to me. There are so many times that I think back at my life, and I think I probably wouldn't be here without the prayers. The biggest prayer warrior, and I feel like it is our job to take up that mantle now, and to all become these warriors and carry on her legacy. And I know how much she loved all of us and we love her terribly. We're going to miss her terribly, but I just didn't know that she's, she's a bomb now. And that's so comforting. And I feel so sorry for people who are in this world right now losing, losing people because of this virus, because of what's happening in the world that don't have that peace that we have. It's such a blessing. And I know that she's rejoicing. And um, I just don't know what or who I would have been without her. So I'm just grateful for that and grateful for everybody who came out and who is watching this right now. And um, I love you guys and I love the support that we've gotten. And like Uncle Bobby said, a big, 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 big love to my and Uncle Pete who helped her when we couldn't. And we sat there helplessly. And we knew things were happening. Uh, and it really came through for her and for us. And we just love you guys so much. Hi. Um, I just want to share a passage of scripture that came from Psalms 31, verses 25 to 27. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. That's my mom. <laughs> um, she was hardworking, sacrificial. Everybody came before her. She was loving and nurturing. When we were small and when we were older, <laughs> it didn't change. And what an exemplary woman she was. Jesse and I used to like to take trips with her. Um, she was always a pleasure to take on trips because she never complained about where you were taking her. She was very agreeable about our trips. She never complained. She was always grateful and it was just a joy to be with her. Um, whenever she'd go even to the doctors, a small trip like that, right? Um, the nurses loved her, um, and they would just uh, hover over her and be as sweet as could be. Um, when they had to take her blood, and even when they messed up taking her blood, she always, always said, thank you, I know you're doing your job. And that would encourage them, even though she was hurting. <laughs> My mom was a prayer warrior. Um, as long as I can remember, she prayed, and she prayed on her knees. Um, and I remember that uh, she would pray for her children, her friends, her family. Uh, the list would go on. She would just be there so long talking to her Lord. And she prayed on her knees even though she was in pain and needed a knee, knee replacement. Um, and that was in her 80s. Um, but even when she wasn't able to get on her knees after the replacement, it didn't stop her from praying. And um, one of the things that uh, she really loved to do was uh, call people. When we were younger, it was the landlines. And uh, when you called, it had to be a local call or there would be a charge. And, and so she was always concerned about that, but she would still make her calls to her family in Puerto Rico, New York, and uh, find out what was happening with them. And then she would bring it all to the Lord in prayer. 
her excitement over a cell phone where she could call anywhere for free <laughs> and have unlimited amount of time was really great. Um, and again, she'd get off those telephone calls and start to pray about all the concerns and problems that she would hear about. My mom, um, her Bible was worn, oh, very, very worn, falling apart. And um, she just loved reading it and meditating on the Word. And I remember not too long ago, <laughs> she asked me to watch, to look at the pa a certain passage because she wanted to see if she had memorized it cor correctly. She was still memorizing passages in her 80s. And um, I remember asking her, okay, mom, this is a chapter, but what's the verse? And she said, no, <laughs> no verse, it's all of them. <laughs> she had memorized the full chapter and, and uh, memorized it very, very well. But that was her passion and her love to um, learn about the Lord more and to have a closer relationship with him. She was truly a, a role model for being a woman of God. And um, I know I speak for my brothers and sister when I say um, we are so thankful to God that he gave us mom as our mother. And we're thankful to God for the, her 93 years that we had her. And um, we're thankful for the model that she was, the legacy that she left for us. And um, so we just praise God for all of that. And um, mom will be well missed. Well, so how far about on your Molly? I know I'm on the, when I was a teenager in the Lord, when the Lord we lived in the apartment across from their house on on the bus academy. I had two, two homes there, two, two houses, right? Mm -hmm. two, three houses. They had, and uh, so we knew, we knew the family. Later on, later on in our, in our life, we found out that my father was, and, and, my, and my mother were related. We didn't know. So he actually, me and Eli, are cousins for a very distant. But anyway, my Lord, you I say this is a perfect example of what a Christian woman should be. She, uh, let's say, with her enthusiasm, she, she kind of went overboard. She's way the way she was. She thought about everybody. How's everybody doing? Like, the women traveling, and how's everybody doing this and that? And I have the pleasure that she referred to my wife. She referred to my wife, Edie. Edie and her have such a great friendship that's incredible to describe. She was always in touch with her. But Doña Oli herself, she was a character. Funny, witty, very merciful. Uh, she always thought about everybody else but herself. And that's, that's the more the class of a Christian person. Doña Oli, she has always been good to me, great to me, and, uh, and to our, our marriage with nice. And also a lot of all the things, little things that we don't even think about. She was good with bankers. The bankers went to her like she was. She had that, you know, the charisma that she had. It's hard to describe. Well, as she would see with the kids. Uh, the last time I that she, that she saw any of the grandkids, I guess, was uh, my my nephew's uh, son, Peyton. He's... He was all over. He came over to visit with, uh, with my, my, my uh, nephew, Chris and Erica. And she, oh, she, he was just drunk to her. And she, that goes that to show the magnetism she had with children. Uh, but she was a true believer. Really, really uh, lived a life. Sometimes with hard times, but most of the time, she was a warrior for you, Lord Jesus. And I know you have received her in her arms, and for a woman that was soft giving always of herself. And she made us proud of us, we love her dearly, I'm going to miss her. 
because she was a wonderful, wonderful person. And I know God, you guys already few arms around her, and she was glad to be out there preaching. Because he told that thing, she said, today you will be in the paradise. And she was all right greater than that thief. Just a believer. And he believed and he became saved. Thank you, Mom, for the things that you don't trust. And for being there for us and for raising the gift of family. You are in his hands and well care for you. Amen. I just want to say a few words for dedication to my mom, who was an awesome mother and um, grandmother. Um, it's a poem I saw that I thought is appropriate. It's called To Dark Garden. And it says, You stroke to live alone, to talk and walk alone, around, I'm sorry, around. But as the illness was relentless, you were forced to give up ground. God saw you getting tired when a cure was not to be. So he wrapped his arms around you and whispered, come to me. And when I saw you sleeping so peacefully and free from pain, I could not wish you back. Discover that again. You did not deserve to suffer more, so he set you down to rest. To God's garden, you are surely bound, so to stick with all the best. That is so appropriate because mom has such a love for the Lord. And I know that's where she is today. And scripture, it says, you have searched me, O Lord, and know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. And if I lay my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, if I rise on the winds of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and thy light become light around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in the book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. We we'll love you. You'll always be in our hearts. You will never be forgotten. You are a great example, and we appreciate that. Um, I'm going to read a poem that one three, it said, do not let your heart be troubled. Jesus spoke these words to his disciples when he was uh, uh, talking about the eventuality of his death. And these are words that probably are comforting or comforting to, to Peter and Philip and the rest. But they also encourage us after we lose someone we love. So let not our hearts be troubled. In Psalms, the Lord is uh, 23rd, and mom so much love. The Lord is my shepherd. That psalm is for Christians, believers in Christ, that takes the Lord as their shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will 
have not nothing to fear. For the Lord is with me, and his rod and his staff, they will comfort me. And the Lord have, has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord has anointed her head with oil, and mom's cup running over. And mom will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live. And whosoever live, believeth in me shall never die. I, I know my Redeemer liveth, and he that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and through his body, though his body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself with my eyes, and shall behold, and not as a stranger. Mom is not a stranger to God. So I just want to thank the woman in my life, <coughs> Mom. And I know that she is in joy running the streets of gold, leaping for joy. But I thank you, Lord God, for bringing her into our lives because she has touched many of us. And she has shared that very love, the love of Christ to others. And she's reaching out to you those who do not know her, to come to know him as Lord and Master in their lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I want to introduce this Pastor Alvarado, uh, Esteban Alvarado, from Market Street, 288 Market Street, who is the pastor of our church. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey guys, it's Nova. We're going to be wrapping it up now. I just want to take a minute to thank a lot of people. Um, so, those who you don't know me, I'm one of the grand, four grandchildren. Um, I just want a big thank you to Rob and Jess who are doing this video and set up the um, slideshow and everything. That was really great. I want to thank everyone who supported her um, through this time. Her church who has been very supportive. I want to thank the family. Um, we miss you guys. We wish you could be here. We understand why you can't. Um, thank you to Novak. <laughs> Did a great job. Um, really, we want to say um, we miss all of you, and she would have loved to have seen you all here, I'm sure. <laughs> She's in a better place now. We love her, and I um, want to make sure that we're thinking, especially Ann Edie, who spent those last days with her. Um, it would have been a lot different without her, so... Um, um, we love you guys, and we appreciate everybody who spent time um, watching this with us, and um, we appreciate your prayers and your thoughts and everybody who reached out. Take care. Bye-bye.